me in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we are privileged to celebrate this Holy Eucharist on this 15th Sunday of Summer Ordinary Time. So good to gather together and let us prepare to celebrate our Mass as we call to mind, acknowledge our sins, and let's open our hearts and all that we are to God's divine mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the divine sower, sowing seed of eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to, to people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we, glorify you, we, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly, heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten, begotten Son, Lord God, God Lamb of God, God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed, the seed that, that falls, falls on good ground, ground will yield a fruitful, fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed, the seed that, that falls, falls on good ground will yield a fruitful a harvest. harvest. Thus have you prepared the land drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed, the seed that, that falls, falls on, on good ground, ground will, will yield, yield a fruitful, a fruitful harvest. harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing closes the hills. The, the seed, seed that, that falls, falls on, on good ground, ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed, seed that, that falls, falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to fertility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope 
that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will have life forever. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds, large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it. Some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So it's hard to believe we're already, seems to be at midsummer, as we are in the midst of July. And a rather wonderful gospel that we are so aware of in our area of the effects of the drought, but so grateful for the rain that lots have gotten. Not everybody, not as much as we need, but the seeds are just, I'm sure, where they have an opportunity, just, just excited and the plants to have that kind of nurturing. And so this morning we continue in Matthew's gospel and reminding that in this summer ordinary time that we're presented in his gospel the three primary discourses of Jesus, teaching powerful moments and to the people. The first being the discourse is the Sermon on the Mount. The second is, which we've heard the last couple of weeks, the mission discourse where Jesus called his apostles and then sent them out to be proclaimers of his life and of the kingdom. And now we enter today in the next couple of Sundays into the discourse of the parables. These wonderful teaching moments that are filled with meaning and purpose, not just about the land and those things that Jesus uses is his primary focal point in teaching, but uses them to be able to explore some deep mysteries of the kingdom of God and inviting us to have open ears and open hearts to what the Lord teaches us about the Lord's kingdom, about our lives and who we are called to be. It was once said that the parables, and there are so many of them, are like a basket full of flashlights that just bring light in different directions and different parts of our lives and our communities, our world, and being able to bring that light of Christ into helping us to have a deeper understanding of God's presence as well as who we are called to be, to be able to light, be a light for us as we grow in becoming disciples of the Lord. And so today's parable of the sower and the seed is one of the most famous and very familiar for us. And yes, it is about the sower, it is about seeds, and it's about soil. And with all of that, it's interesting when we listen to the beginnings and there's a much longer gospel today that you're welcome to read, but the sower is pretty reckless and probably a lot of farmers in our area would just think of that he just was not doing things right. 
and just scattering seed in kind of a willy-nilly kind of fashion rather than machines that can put things, seeds into a very appropriate straight lines and all those kind of realities. It seems kind of messy, doesn't it? And it seems a rather inefficient mode of farming. But again, we can marry and trust the sower, which who certainly is an image of our God, who knows and trusts what seeds are all about and the ab abundant possibilities of seeds, no matter how small or large they happen to be. The image of the soils that, again, can, they can compare many different soils to different ways that soils respond to receiving a seed, but it's also reminding us that the seeds are an image of God's Word and the different soils that you and I are at different times in our lives to receive God's Word and to allow it to be either a growth or, or not so much in our lives. And so, Sometimes the way those, the gospel reminds us that when we can receive God's word or that word is spread to everyone, but sometimes it's rejected. Sometimes we have a good start at responding to God's word and growing in faith. But sometimes we can get distracted and we can get misguided, move away from those possibilities. Sometimes it is that word that is choked in our lives because of different interests and different kinds of obstacles that get in the way. But it really calls the question for all of us as becoming disciples of how you and I are responding to God's word and God's teachings and who God calls us to be as disciples of the Lord and inviting us to know, think about, what kind of soil are we? And interesting that we notice in the gospel that that the field that the farmer was sowing all of those seeds had all those different kinds of soil in its very midst. Whether it was good soil or rocky soil or thorns, whatever it might be. And maybe perhaps an opportunity for us to think about in our own lives. How many times, and perhaps more recently, have we had those moments that we've really just allowed God's message to bounce off of us in one ear and out the other, and it doesn't really make a difference? Or those times that we just allowed God's word to take root in our lives, but then they would tend to wither soon after. We get caught up, whatever it might be. And those times that we really find just the seed, that word just meets us at just the right time, that we are responsive and we are open to God's word, to God's grace, to continue to become who he calls us to be, to be as we hear and prayed in the responsorial psalm this morning, to bear fruit, to be powerful children of God, witnesses of his life and his truth. And so there's this great image of God who really spreads and offers his word, his very life, the, the, the image of the kingdom and that light to be able to be guidance for everyone, everyone, whoever they may be, wherever they may be. And something God has a real sense and trust that there will be a fruitfulness of God's word and the opportunity we hold out to that we can change this world if we more faithfully listen and grow into God's word. And so it's a word of challenge. It's a word of comfort. And it's also, which I love to always think about, it's a reminder how patient God is with all of us. Whatever, however, moments of soil we are, that God is very patient and just waits for us to be able to be open and responsive. May we pray this morning for that kind of grace as God's people to live more deeply as God's people. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth, of all things visible and invisible. And invisible. I, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten Son, Son of God, born of the, the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, light true God, God from true God, God. begotten not, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Father. through Who him all things were made. made. For, for us men and for our salvation, salvation he, he came down, down from heaven. heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now offer our prayers for God's kingdom here on earth. That Pope Francis, Bishop Donald, and all ministers may be true sowers of the seed of faith to those they shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civic leaders, that they advocate for adequate care and the dignity of vulnerable populations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the farmers, ranchers, and gardeners who provide the world's food, that they receive a just reward for their labor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are living with mental illness, disability, loss, or grief, may they feel the Lord's love, care, and strength from the compassionate love of family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those near death may know true faith and inner peace. And for all who have died, especially Julius and Caligira Bonira, whom we remember at this Mass, may they now live forever in eternal peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now, in a moment of silence, let us offer our personal prayers to our loving God. For these we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you sent your word among us to bring forth life and to renew the face of the earth. We humbly offer our lives and these petitions this day as we do so in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy fair therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. What this is, the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, we proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess, profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may, we may be brought together in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer his word of peace to those who may be near to us. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. The body of Christ. Let us pray. 
Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. So our Mass has now ended. Let us go to bring the light of Christ's truth and love to all. Thanks be to God. We are led in worship for the 15th Sunday in Summer Ordinary Time by our presider, Monsignor Larry Bakke, the chaplain of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison. I'm Peggy Weber. I'm a member of St. Patrick Parish in Cottage Grove and serve as a member of the Apostolate Advisory Council. It's always a pleasure to join Monsignor Larry in providing this television mass ministry of the Apostolate. Thanks to the American Sign Language interpretation of Sue Gudenkoff of St. Dennis Parish in Madison and the closed captioning sponsored by the Apostolate, our sisters and brothers in faith who are deaf or hard of hearing were able to share with us in this Eucharistic celebration. It is with continued gratitude that we thank the owner, the management, and the staff of WISC-TV, who by their generosity and sincere concern for the spiritual lives of those living with illness and or challenges of disabilities and aging, bring this TV mass to people in their homes and healthcare facilities. Until next Sunday morning, make it a beautiful week and may your life be one of knowing the love and care God has for you.